Hi there. This is the MSI Raider A18HX A9W, and I'll show you how to open it. The sizable bottom plate is fixed to the main body with 12 Phillips head screws. Start the prying process from the zones around the side exhausts using a thin plastic tool. You'll need to apply more pressure in these areas. When you feel that the internal clips are released, slide the tool to the end of the side. You might be able to pop the front and the remaining side by gently lifting the plate. If not, use the above mentioned method. The rear is your last effort before the opening. Pop the left and right sections with a lever tool and use a thin plastic tool to pry the middle part. Now you can lift the whole plate. On the inside, you'll find dust filters for the speakers, rubber elements for better internal support, and a long, soft padding above the battery. The latter is a large 99.99 watt hour unit. If you have to take it away, pull down the connector. Since the battery itself obstructs the connector, so the safest method is to detach the battery first and then pull the connector. In our case, I'll just drag and then lift the back of the connector until it's clear of the battery. The next step is to undo the four Phillips heads that secure the battery to the main body. Despite the large capacity, the battery life is not impressive at all. When the adapter isn't plugged in, the unit has enough juice for a bit more than two hours of 4K YouTube video playback, despite the fact that all possible power-saving features were enabled during the test. The Wi-Fi 7 card is replaceable, which is expected for a laptop of this size. A metal plate covers the pair of memory slots. You can gently pry it off with a lever tool, but be careful as a very sticky pad in the middle is glued to the plastic slots. They fit up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5, 5,600 megahertz memory. The top Gen 5 SSD slot is additionally cooled by the seventh heat pipe of the thermal system. This pipe connects to the lower GPU pipe via a metal plate and two screws. The small pipe itself makes contact with a metal plate that covers both SSD slots. The storage upgrade is complicated since you have to undo a total of five screws before removing the plate. It houses three thermal pads, one for the top heat sink and two for the M.2 slots. By the way, the bottom slot is for Gen 4 drives. MSI has pre-installed a thermal pad in front of each NVMe slot. Keep in mind that your laptop will lack an SSD pipe if the machine is configured with just a Gen 4 drives. Let's take a look at the massive Cooler Boost 5 cooling with two big fans. 
We already discussed the extra pipe for the NVMe. The system also offers a bunch of copper heat pipes for the other components. The top three are shared between the CPU and the GPU. Each chip also has one dedicated pipe, and the processor's pipe even extends over the graphics card. A small U-shaped pipe is also positioned above the GPU chip. The cooling features four heat sinks, two at the top and two on the side, alongside two large cooling plates above the CPU and GPU dies. The larger one is on the graphics card side, and it cools the memory and the VRM section as well. It's time to take out the cooling. Let's start with something simple, like disconnecting the fan connectors and the bigger one located near the left fan. Use a lever tool to gently pry this connector by the front tooth. Its cable is glued to the top of the fan housing. The two metal covers above the fans are secured with four screws each, but they cannot be removed because they are welded to the heat pipes. To get to the motherboard, you must remove the three Phillips head screws around each fan, plus two more sets of three screws on top of the two chips. Then pop the lower side of the cooling with a lever tool. This reveals the CPU featuring its two CCDs and the GPU, which is surrounded by memory chips. Check out our full review at techpowerup.com.